When you're mapping geology, it's really useful to be able to quickly identify carbonate bearing rocks because carbonates are often a good host for some styles of mineralization and carbonate alteration often forms a halo around other types of mineralization. And if you're mapping stratigraphy, then they can make good marker units. But you don't have time to stop and pull out the acid bottle on every outcrop. So let's look at a few quick ways to identify rocks that might have carbonate in them before you pull out the acid bottle. I'm Nick Tate, and this is another video in the series of Fieldcraft for Geologists. The most obvious indicator of carbonate rocks in the field is cast topography. The hillsides are often barren of vegetation and they develop a characteristic fluted texture. A useful thing for identifying carbonates in the field are these rounded scallop shaped pits that develop in the surface. Of course, the diagnostic acid test is always the best if it's calcite, but some other carbonates don't fizz, like dolomite and some iron bearing carbonates, but they still develop that same characteristic surface texture. Another characteristic thing you often see on carbonate outcrops is these V-shaped valleys along the top of all the fractures. Now here's a rock with a fairly typical texture of a carbonate on the weathering surface, but it's a little bit darker brown than usual. You can see it's got this really rough surface and some sharp ridges along here that represent the original bedding planes. And there's also some of those V-shaped fractures it's a little bit darker brown than usual, so I guess it's probably not pure calcite. So when I break this rock open, it's got this thick brown porous rind around the outside. That's a really typical weathering characteristic of carbonate rocks. So let's put a bit of acid on it and see what happens. Okay, it's fizzing, but it's fizzing fairly slowly. And that tells me it's probably dolomite rather than calcite. Here's another really good example of that brown porous weathering rind that you get on carbonate rocks. The higher the carbonate content, the thinner that rind tends to be and the more rapid the transition. In rocks that are pure limestone, there may be no rind at all and it'll be fresh right to the surface. Let's put a bit of acid on this one and see what that does. Okay, that fizzes like mad, so it's pretty sure that that's calcite, and this rock is almost a marble. There's another peculiar surface texture that can help you to identify calcareous siltstones and shales, even when they only have a few percent carbonate. They develop this random but regularly spaced fracture pattern with smooth curved surfaces and square edges. The pattern seems to develop best in rocks that are also a bit carbonaceous and that texture will persist even after the carbonate has been leached out by weathering or some hydrothermal process. On weathered surfaces like this, carbonate rich layers or fragments tend to be recessive because the carbonate dissolves much more easily in rain or groundwater than the surrounding silicate minerals. In this case, we've got some quartz veins cutting through a marble and you can see the quartz veins are standing proud of the surface and the carbonate in between is recessive because it's been dissolved away by rainwater. This recessive fragment is also made of carbonate. The unusual surface pattern with vertical fibrous grains of calcite perpendicular to coliform layers is known as palisade texture. And it's diagnostic of travertine deposition in surface pools around groundwater springs and hydrothermal vents. Calcite's pretty easy to identify when it grows into a large open cavity like this vein here. It usually forms coarse grain crystals like this. It has these characteristic rhombic shaped cleavage blocks. The hardness is about three, so it scratches easily with a scriber and it reacts well to 10% HCl. It's pretty rare to see actual crystals of calcite but pieces like this, which are broken on all of the three perfect cleavages, are pretty common. You can see there's one perfect cleavage there, a second one there, and a third one there. And they're not quite 90 degrees. All of them are about 10 degrees off. 
and because the cleavages are perfect, when you break a piece along the cleavage plane, you get a perfect glass-like finish and it reflects light really strongly. Iron bearing carbonates are a little bit more difficult to identify, but they're important because they commonly occur in hydrothermal systems and they indicate a stage of fluid evolution that was carrying metals. Siderite is usually dark brown, like many ferromagnesian silicates, and it doesn't react to 10% HCl, but it has three strongly developed cleavages that are characteristic of carbonates. Free growing crystals of siderite commonly develop a characteristic axe blade shape. In this example, the siderite has been oxidized to girthite that closely resembles gossenafta sulfide, but the rhombic cleavage angles in the box works confirm that the original mineral was a carbonate. Anchorite is another common iron magnesium carbonate. Its color ranges from cream to brown depending on the relative amounts of iron and magnesium. Anchorite is notorious for disappearing because it commonly starts out as a cream colour in freshly cut specimens, but turns dark brown within a matter of days as iron oxides form on its surface. When those iron oxides form, it camouflages itself against any surrounding ferromagnesian silicate minerals. When iron bearing carbonates weather, they release their iron and it forms girthite and other hydrated iron oxides. They commonly have a powdery texture and a distinctive mustard brown colour. Now here we've got a nice example of Gossen after iron bearing carbonate. On the outside it looks pretty much like a regular Gossen. It's dark brown and it's got a pitted surface. But on the inside you can see that characteristic powdery mustard brown colour that's typical of weathering iron bearing carbonates. If you have a closer look you can see that typical powdery texture, mustard brown colour and there's not too many cavities. This little patch here that's kind of darker brown with a bit of a spongy texture and some holes in it, that might have actually been after sulphide. But the majority of it was clearly after iron bearing carbonate, probably anchorite. So there's a few extra tools to pack in your geological field kit when you're out looking for carbonates. They should help to speed up your mapping and maybe pick up a carbonate or two that you might have missed if you were just using the acid bottle. This is the headline version for YouTube. If you'd like the full video, then go to the link in the description below. And for the price of a box of acid bottles, you can get the full version of this video, all the other videos in the Fieldcraft series, and anything new I shoot as I find interesting things in the field.